Hello, my name is Mathieu Parmentier. I'm leading uh, the data and AI department from France Television. I'm very pleased here uh, with our partner Perfect Memory to show you how we deal with the descriptive metadata of our program. In a few data, the France TV group is the French big public broadcaster with a lot of channels, lots of uh, contents and uh, lots of departments and units. And like every uh, big company of such size, we have to change our mindset and, and really become uh, data centric. And to make, uh, to turn data into goals, uh, it means for us uh, the capacity to, to make data accessible, fresh, rich, trustable and reliable all over the company. And the challenge is that uh, the situation a few years ago when the new CTO arrived uh, was the, the juxtaposition of several silos where all the production units were doing their job with uh, their own data and, and a few of them were circulating in order to be uh, broadcast on, on the linear or the non-linear content. And what we did is the creation of a data lake uh, to concentrate the most valuable data for television. That means the, the metadata that really describe, represent the TV programs. So that's the way we, we did that. And uh, because we concentrated all these data on this data lake, uh, we had also to deal with different uh, knowledge from the various uh, business units. And that was very important for us to build a knowledge manager, a data uh, asset manager above this data lake to be sure that the shared data are understood by everyone. And the objective of today is to show you uh, especially what we did in the range of uh, prototyping and industrialization of processes uh, of media. Uh, to run uh, the industrialized uh, rhythm of, uh, of media processing, we are using an open source platform we developed a few years ago and we're still uh, uh, enhanced today. It's divided into two parts. On the left part, the brain is on the on-premise or the private cover of France Television, when on the right part, we use the power uh, of the public clouds to scale up our processing and uh, to be able to uh, handle uh, thousands of jobs every day. Uh, if I offer you a brief overview of what we can do in this uh, media cloud AI uh, processing platform is the fact that each process is divided into a microservice and we have a big orchestration of this microservice in order to accomplish a more complex analyzing workflow. And now let's dive into two use cases with very complex workflow for which we worked with Telecom Sud Paris. Uh, the first workflow is about this, the automatic generation of thumbnail, and what you can see here is the, the back office um, uh, lab interface that allows us to elect the five best pictures that represent the program based on several parameters uh, which are directly operated at the output of several AI models. So we are using here six uh, AI models to qualify the different uh, aspects that are constituting some parameters and we are acting on these parameters depending on the content, depending on the need of the editorial guy uh, to choose the best uh, representative feature. At the time of industrializing uh, this uh, thumbnail generator, we turn this uh, AI model into microservice and this is how we proceed to uh, run today uh, hundreds of uh, automatic generation of thumbnail. The second use case I would like to show you is about the automatic segmentation of the contents in order to better qualify what is happening in each scene and especially in order to feed the recommendation engine or the search engines and also to allow the advertisement com uh, company to place the right advertisement at the right moment uh, corresponding to the right actions uh, in the scenes. To do that, uh, we are also using a lot of AI models in order to be able to segment the different shots uh, and to recognize uh, in which shot uh, some elements are giving us the impression that they belong to the same scene. So the idea here is to make a sort of uh, uh, multi-dimensional approach to be able to qualify each shot and on top of this approach, being able uh, to run several uh, applications in order to remove the maximum of false positives. To do that, we have this multimodal approach, which allows us to look at the short similarities, 
that happens uh, on the um, on the selection. To do that, we have uh, dedicated a CNN uh, train uh, to give us an overview on on the variety of the of the shots uh, that's happening in the scene, and we are also uh, looking at the face that could be recognized in order to to see if this uh, face distribution allows us to think that we are still in the same scene or we have probably changed uh, the scene because the, the same people are not uh, visible uh, anymore. We are also basing uh, our decision on the shot similarity estimation based on, on the audio features. And this is uh, how we deal to recognize the different patterns we can have in the different shots in order to to consider if we are still in the same scenes. And finally, we are also detecting all the objects that are seen able in, in, the, in the foreground and uh, some other identification like the fact we are indoor or outdoor or in the same place. At the end, we have sufficient answers to have this uh, coherent multimodal approach and being able to say that the shots are belonging to the same scenes. Uh, here is what it gives on the platform and because we have time I will uh, just jump to the real world because that's not uh, just a PowerPoint this is also uh, working in the in the real life and what you can see here uh, it's a platform where uh, it's the, the, the production platform where actually we have a few uh, uh, job which uh, effectively run so we have a, a gain segmentation solution like for example uh, uh, requires the detection of the different shots, the place, an audio module to qualify what happens uh, inside. And uh, if we go to uh, another kind of uh, workflow when we want to segment like a, like a fiction, scene segmentation of fiction, here it is. We can have this one that was uh, running during this afternoon. Uh, we see that we have this face detection module, the visual uh, module that uh, qualify each shot, the object detection module, and uh, the place module also and, and all that is, is working every day and it's processing a lot of files and now I will let the floor to Louis who is going to present the data asset manager from Perfect Memory uh, the other big uh, systems we implemented uh, over the data lake. Th thank you very much everyone for, for your attention I'm very happy to be here um, but Go, m moving on from the data lake, actually, um, what we did uh, together with, uh, with France Television at uh, Perfect Memory is really once we have this knowledge, we have this data that is all stored, all those valuable data that are you know, available within the data lake, uh, we started to work together on the layer to manage the knowledge, to uh, try to structure it. And the idea was really to try to give the tool in order to access, govern, and uh, reach the data, expose it in, to all the different usit, units, sorry, and make it accessible. So the, all, all the objectives of this layer is really all about the engineering, the, the, the data and the knowledge engineering, really, uh, really. So the idea was to design and implement, you know, the group-wide data lifecycle and management strategies. So give the tools for Mathieu and his teams to be able to take control of all the uh, data lifecycle. Uh, value to all the different units, you know, the data that were generated from the different production environments, from the AI processing, and Mathieu will show us, you know, right after um, some, uh, some processing that they were performing. Uh, really expose all the assets and all the data to the various business applications and business uh, units in order to, to uh, accelerate and enable the interoperability and the sharing of all the data between the units. Um, obviously, there's, there's, an, uh, there's an item about, control that, you know, there's a point of controlling all the risks that, rela that are related to data when it comes to copyright, content rights, that can be enabled within this knowledge sharing. And the whole point at the end of the day is really how can we help each of the production uh, teams to shorten, you know, the access to key data, to shorten their, uh, their production time and, to, and obviously to accelerate the fact that they can exploit all those data. So we, we took we took the, the assumption that we moved from the need of having connected applications you know, within, the, within the ecosystem of France Television to, to bring what we call a cognitive application. Uh, so how can we bring an application that brings the data and the content up to uh, the human level so that it's directly intuitive and it's directly usable in the right context on their day-to-day -day task? Uh, so 
what we did was what, what, what the system uh, helps you know also uh, to do is first of all collect the data that are that is within the data within the data lake process all the data and map it you know in a in a semantic ontology in a semantic reference common reference to all the different uh, France Television uh, business then obviously assist to the decision. Uh, the idea is not to take the decision for the people. It's not to tell, tell them you should do this, you should do that, but expose the right data in the right context so that they can take the decision themselves and pre-prepare all the ground so they're ready to make efficiently the decision. And last but certainly not least, broadcast the decisions across all the different production environment. Um, so the approach that we take, um, that we took together uh, between France Television and together with France Television was really, the first thing is create this ontology create the common, the, the common reference between, you know, uh, that embeds all the key data that was stored in the, in the data lake, and that makes the data interoperable between all the production units, between all the production silos, be it the web publishing uh, team or, you know, the news production. Uh, once, we, once we had that, uh, we, could, we can start, you know, managing all the data, all the content, sorry, and the related data. And as the data and the content are flowing into uh, the system, you know, they are mapped against the ontology. They are mapped against this human-centric uh, ontology that is uh, really aligned with the business of France Television, which allows to enrich, you know, all the data by applying infer semantic inferences to generate fact-based data on top of all the heuristic-generated uh, AI that all the teams, uh, all the teams, all the Daya teams has been working uh, in um, with all the tools that they've implemented. So. The, the idea is really to start detecting patterns between vi vi various heterogeneous uh, data sets and also deliver the users you know, with an experience uh, in interacting with the data that is very intuitive and that directly talk their voc vocabularies and talk their, uh, the objects that they manipulate on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's really, the, that's really the, um, the gain that the semantic technologies that we've implemented within the scope of France Television brought us really this ability to deliver the ontolo uh, an ontology that replicates all the objects and that creates this common reference for all the different business of France Television so that it talks to them on the day-to-day. -day. Obviously, the fact that we took this knowledge graph approach, sorry, I've lost my mouse up. Ah, I went one, one part too fast. So we really created this ontology graph and uh, we implemented this knowledge graph to expose you know, all the data and the content and that makes the system, you know, very easily to adjust because if, when, whenever a business ch change its needs, or the only thing we have to change is actually the concept. We have to make it evolve, which is just one node of the graph, which helps us actually to come to, uh, in the time frame, constantly stay and evolve together with the way the needs, uh, the, the news are working, or the way the or the web publishing uh, people are working, you know, what kind of new data they need, what kind of new data they need to exploit in order to enrich the offering on the various, uh, on the various online uh, offering of France Television. So the system, to, 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 to give you quickly a, um, a quick glance, sorry, on the system. So we have all the different data sources, the data lake being one of them, obviously, that are connect, that are mapped against this ontology thanks to, the, thanks to you know, a set of connectors that really is here to make the link between the raw data as it comes, you know, the, the, the oil as it comes into gold that is directly exploitable because it's mapped into this business ontology and directly exploitable by all the different business units. And the third part is all about providing access, you know, it's enabling this transparency, enab enabling this visibility of all the content and data that are managed within uh, the data lake that are available to all the different units uh, for their day to day. Um, so, the main point of all this is really how do we make the data and content actionable by the business? I insisted quite a lot, but the idea is really how do we refine all the incoming data on the common model and generate knowledge, you know, apply all the business rules that, uh, that the semantic technologies allows us to implement in order to generate inferences, generate knowledge, or, or apply inferences, sorry, generate fact-based knowledge, which means 100% accurate knowledge because really defined according to these business rules. The second part is how do we empower the delivery of all the processes, which are, you know, how do we manage the workflows? How do we orchestrate workflows? How do we manage the asset lifecycle? How do we enrich the data 
all based once again on what's there and what's usable by the business and what's exploitable directly by the business. The last part is once again, this uh, access, how do we navigate and explore the object uh, within the knowledge graph using the common FTV language, the common ontology that, it, that talks to all the business and the vocabulary that the, uh, the users that the stakeholders are using on a day-to-day -day basis. So what, what, what we, if I want to summarize very quickly, what, we, what really we did is create this, um, this connection, create this gateway between the two uh, very big pillars of AI. The first one, which is the heuristic AI, which is the most common part of, uh, about it you know, during, the, during this conference, which is all about observing, taking some assumptions, detecting the patterns, and then raising the data back into management system. The second part of AI is how do we generate knowledge not based on assumptions, you know, which obviously um, embeds you know, a part of uncertainty, but based on facts. We have data that are coming into the system. We, apply, we look at the data that is coming in, check if there's any business rules that we can, uh, that we can deploy. Is there any semantic inference that will allow us to generate knowledge and then create this knowledge based on facts? Then the, idea, the, then the ontology is in the middle, really. It's really the cornerstone of the entire approach. How do we map you know, all these data coming from AI tools into this business-driven ontology so that as soon as it's been uh, detected, as soon as it's fed back by the engine, then it's directly exploitable by the business on their day-to-day -day task. So to summarize, the, the, the three big pillars that we've implemented or uh, that, that we aim to implement because the orchestration is, uh, is, uh, is, being, um, is being implemented by Matthew and the team is really first, how do we enable transparency for all the teams to, uh, through an intuitive exploration, through the knowledge, through all the, through all the connaissance we say in French, you know, so, so through all this data content information that is really the valuable assets of France Télévisions. Uh, how do we orchestrate uh, all the workflows, uh, all the processes around the content through the business data that is uh, capturated and that is mapped uh, by, the, by the platform? And last and certainly not least, because we now have this tool you know, to manage and access the data, how can we uh, apply the right governance scheme, the right governance, uh, the right governance uh, policies to make sure that all our knowledge is under control, all, our, all the FTV knowledge can be managed while keeping 100% relevant data only because they are mapped, because the data is mapped once again into this business ontology, into this business schematic of all the different concepts that were, that were generated we are sure that every data that is stored into the system and that is exposed to all the different units is actually a relevant, uh, a relevant data. So just to, get, to, to bring back you know, the, the image we had uh, at the beginning, I give back the, the control to Mathieu, who's going to show you a little bit more concretely, actually, what this meant. Mathieu, over to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Louis. So um, after this explanation of the the, the knowledge structure. Uh, now we are going to dive into what we have. Then we have the result that uh, happens on the on the perfect memory uh, website where we can see uh, what are the, the candidate thumbnail that are proposed here. And if we go to the timeline, we can see all the enrichment that is proposed from the detection of the shots, which are all detected, and the scenes, which are. Uh, uh, assembled uh, from the shots. And uh, as you can see on the, on the right side, uh, for example, uh, here, at the detail of the scene, we have this confidence score of 97% that says that at the end of this scene, if you want to put an advertisement, you can because the end of this scene is very, um, is very uh, different from the scene after. So this is a, a way we can really uh, uh, focus on, on this confidence score to know uh, where we could more cut the content uh, between two different scenes. So for sure here we can see that these are different peoples and that's the way the AI decided it was different scenes. If I want to see the credits that has been automatically uh, finded, we have here uh, the beginning of the credits, which is uh, supposed to begin here and uh, the end of the credits, which are here, uh, right after, thank you. 
So this is the way we are uh, doing that. And as you can see, we keep all the all the data that are uh, today uh, found in the in the content. That means that, for example, uh, even there is no uh, use case now for if, if I'm looking for uh, people that are, uh, for example, uh, using a cell phone, uh, it's something I can uh, very easily uh, uh, see uh, by by just requesting the data lake to show me uh, to show me the phone data. And we also developed an offset detector between two files from the same programs that sometimes happen when the the replay version uh, of the program is not exactly the same uh, time code uh, beginning than the, the, the official master. So it's very interesting to have this offset calculator so that we can uh, we can find the relevant markers and reuse them uh, on the replay version of the program by just uh, applying the, the found offset. So um, I'm going to close this presentation and uh, Thank you very much for your attention. I'm very happy to, to answer some more questions, if any. So don't hesitate. Thank you.